So again, welcome everybody uh, on December for our December Meet the Lenders. This is uh, our last one of 2022. Um, it was uh, it was a fantastic year, certainly an adventurous year. Um, hopefully everybody is well. I know that there's a lot of uh, a lot of flus going around, so hopefully everybody is either uh, recovered or recovering, or hopefully in the best category of all free of that particular problem. So, uh, but uh, looking forward certainly to 2023 as well for everybody, um, you know, as we've continued to, to assist small businesses, uh, 2022 in uh, the SBDCs helped uh, businesses access around 400 million in capital. Um, but really what it is, is important for, for you all to understand what is, you know, what is out there. There are um, good lenders, there are bad lenders, there's different types of lenders, and more than important than anything else, different lenders fit your businesses in different times and for different situations. And I think that's the most important thing. At the SBDC, we of course are a no cost service and no obligation service. We, we don't lend, we don't sell, we don't have any obligations, but we're here to help you at no cost. We have many, many different expert advisors to, to be able to help you, uh, to be able to grow your business, to be able to access capital and really uh, be able to prepare yourself for a loan as well. So we have a fantastic panel today. I'm looking forward certainly to, to having them, uh, but we're going to kick it off with our fantastic partners from the Small Business Administration. Um, so Lucy Montgomery, take it away. Thank you so much, uh, Danny. I'm just going to share my screen. Just one second, please. There we go. Hopefully you can all see my screen. We can. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. So first of all, I'm Lucy Montgomery, and I want to thank Danny and all of the sponsors of this meeting. It's really great one, and I'm glad you did the first step of attending this so you can get a little knowledge, because knowledge is power, power is money. So let's get, let's get going. Um, I'm going to start off, just jump right into COVID idle. Just uh, thank you, Danny, for giving me a, just a couple of minutes to give an update on this um, right now. Um, $390 billion were given out in COVID idle loans to 3.9 million small businesses. So many of you perhaps on the call might be in starting your repayment period. So I just wanted to give just a little bit of information. You might, uh, I'm going to have another slide with the phone numbers just really quick. So you might want to get your camera phone out. So if you have a COVID idle loan to take a picture of a little bit of this information, uh, just real quick. COVID idle loans currently are not uh, listed to be forgiven. Um, if you need to close your business or make a change to your business, you do need to contact the servicing centers. Uh, so take a look at your loan documents. It gives you some information. Um, you cannot combine uh, separate SBA loans. And um, if you're having trouble making payments, you can call your servicing center to discuss. I'll give you that number. Uh, it's right here, but I'll give it to you in a little easier format in just a second. If you need a copy of your loan documents, contact the servicing center either by their 800 number or their email. And if you just want 24 hour access to look at when your dates are, what's due, what your account is, you can go ahead and, and, and log on and make an account into the call web system. Please use the user guide step-by-step -step before you start making an account. I do recommend you do that using a computer and not just your phone and give yourself at least 20 minutes so that, um, uh, because you have to follow the directions specifically. And here's the slide I was talking about. If you wanna take your camera phone up and take a photo, um, if you have trouble with your idle loan, uh, payment questions, payoffs uh, right here to customer service. Oh, I went to, I accidentally clicked, sorry. If you have a change in ownership or need collateral release documents, please contact your servicing center. Our servicing center for California is El Paso. If you're told El Paso and that seems wrong, it's actually not. That is our servicing center for California. And if you have trouble getting into that capital access financial system, which is your online system to make your payments, uh, here's the support line and email address right there. So a lot of you did learn about the SBA uh, from COVID, unfortunately, but it's also a blessing for us because we've actually been around for 70 years and 2023 will be uh, celebrating 70 years of SBA. Uh, SBA um, works to ignite change and spark action. So we're trying to help you uh, and it's our mission to help you start, grow, expand and recover. 
this particular seminar is about needing access to capital, and uh, most businesses do need access to some kind of funding in a variety of ways. We're going to talk today about lending. If you other ways SBA can help with funding is first SBA back loans, second private investors, research and development awarded funds, and we can help with surety bonds. So that's a little bit of background. If you need information on number two, three, or four, uh, please discuss with your SBDC advisor and they can give you a little hint or call our office and we can direct you to uh, the information. This is how an SBA guaranteed loan works. And that's why I think it's so important that you're on this call with these lenders. Uh, San Diego is a small community. Uh, these are uh, your community of lenders that have been vetted by SBDC. And so um, they're good to get the information from. So you'll get your loan from our lending partner. They'll give you the money and directly to the small business. You notice uh, the SBA is actually not in this transaction. And that's uh, the reason that is, is because we guarantee the loan. So we're kind of a back office deal here. Uh, that's different than our emergency disaster loans. Uh, the SBA works with these approved lenders. And the reason we do that is because when we guarantee the loan, you can get more competitive terms, lower down payments, uh, more flexible overhead and counseling and education with an SBA product. It may be that an SBA product works for you, but I do want to asterisk that and say sometimes it, it's not. So please, um, there's SBA products, there's non-SBA products, there's listen to these lenders closely on this and find what works for you. And if you, and if you need help, contact your SBDC advisor. You can use your SBA back loan uh, to launch, grow, repair your business, um, basic purchase industry, uh, inventory, purchase land or real estate. Uh, there is a revolving credit option. Uh, you can renovate or you can expand. This is different than COVID idle, which, which limited um, use for growth. You can actually use these regular SBA products to uh, grow and expand. These are the sort of SBA products. We have our 504 loan, which is real estate. We have our 7A loan, which is our kind of flagship business loan. We have our micro loan, which is 50,000 or under. Within 7A, there's community advantage loans, and if you're in exporting, international trade loans. And I put at the bottom the little sad brain cloud because we also come when there's uh, bad news on the horizon um, for with disaster loans, those we do directly. I do want to point out, please listen closely to these lenders and your SBDC um, advisor because it, you can exponentially increase your, your success of getting a loan if you have business plan, expense sheets, financial statements, and financial projections ready for your business, and your resource partner, who in this case, uh, we're so happy to partner with the SBDC uh, to help you with these things. If you have these things ready, you can go it alone, and you could use our lender match uh, program, which is right online, and you can get matched with SBA lenders. You want to take a photo of that, how to get to lender match. But we recommend, and you'll find when you listen to this webinar, uh, that an SBA resource partner or finding the right lender first, uh, again, exponentially increases your chance of success. So there are 1,400 partners nationwide in San Diego. Um, we're going to highlight here the SBDC, uh, which has just been wonderful at helping uh, small businesses access capital. We also have some of, uh, they work closely with the Women's Business Center, um, with the VBOC, which is uh, the Veterans Business Outreach Center. And then we also have SCORE volunteers. So take a look at any of these. You can again, take a picture because you can get free services uh, and free and low cost training uh, for your business. And if you're not doing this, you, you should get a mentor. Thank you so much. And I uh, hope I didn't go too long, but I'll stop sharing now. Uh, feel free to follow us on our newsletter. Follow us on Twitter, which we are active. Uh, and we appreciate uh, your feedback. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Awesome. Thanks, Lucy. Uh, again, the uh, the local SBA district office, uh, they they are a small but mighty staff, and they, they've done some fantastic work. Uh, Lucy is a is a great asset to to small businesses. So 
uh, absolutely appreciate you. And I uh, also want to uh, be able to thank all of our sponsors for this particular event. Um, so for 2022, it would included Banner Bank, Pacific Premier Bank, Primary Funding, LensSpark, CDC Small Business Finance, Marble Bridge Funding, United Midwest Savings, Founders First Capital Partners, and Civic Communities. So appreciate everybody for uh, being able to, to continue to sponsor. So we'll go ahead and get started with our panel. Looking forward to kind of hearing it. Um, Fred Crispin, unfortunately, had some uh, technical difficulties and wasn't able to, to join, but certainly United Midwest Savings, uh, uh, they're a fantastic lender. They, they do help out a lot of startup businesses. Um, so as you reach out to your SBDC advisor, we can certainly help you out with, uh, with that as well. So we'll go ahead and move into the panel and allow... Um, you know, be able to have, you know, have people introduce themselves. Um, so why don't we go ahead and uh, why don't we start with you, Fernando, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, we'll roll through the panel. Good morning. Thank you, Danny. Uh, Fernando Ponce with Primary Funding. Uh, we are a asset-based lender based here in San Diego. We provide factoring services, purchase order financing. Uh, we also do some brokering, but ultimately we just uh, try to help companies that are not currently bankable uh, to get the financing they need, and then hopefully work with them to get them over to a, a banking partner uh, in the future. Awesome. And Melissa. Hey, Danny. Good morning, everyone. Melissa Kresser with Wells Fargo Bank. Um, we are here in San Diego and across the country, um, so I'm able to assist customers all over. Um, and we specifically can assist with unsecured lines of credit, credit cards, um, lines of credit unsecured up to 150, unsecured credit cards up to 250. Uh, we offer commercial equity lines and loans in first and second position. Um, we can go up to a million in first and in second position, 500,000. We do um, we specialize in healthcare loans as well for our doctors. We can do startups, expansions, um, equipment financing. We also have an equipment finance channel. And um, of course, SBA 504 and 7A. Thank you, Danny. Thanks, Melissa. Pete. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. My name is Pete Egan. I'm with LensSpark. Uh, we help businesses, uh, small and medium-sized businesses, acquire working capital and a variety of different ways and also equipment financing. Similar to some of the other lenders here, we help when the banks maybe say no, or maybe just to fill in some gaps and work with you along with your bank and hopefully just help you get into a status where you can be a completely bankable business at some point. Thanks, Pete. Miriam. Morning, Danny. Um, yeah, so I work at CDC Small Business Finance, which is now part of Momentus, and we have been around for 40 plus years, and we have been working together with the SBDC for at least that long. <laughs> we have a long-standing relationship, and um, so what we do is we are mission-oriented, so our mission is to be able to help people that um, may not be able to get traditional lending. So whether you're a startup business, whether you're a women-owned business, you're a minority, you're in a lower moderate income area, that, that's really um, kind of the, the mission, the heart of what we do is trying to help people that typically can't access um, credit otherwise or um, capital otherwise. Um, so uh, we do pre-revenue funding. So you have a startup that still doesn't have revenue. Um, you know, anywhere from a year to two years, still a startup with losses, we may be able to help you. If you're an existing business owner or you want to acquire a new business, um, we may be able to help you as well. Um, and some of the ways that we are able to, I guess, look a lot different than a bank is we don't have a minimum credit score requirement. We don't collateralize and there's a lot of other good stuff that we do. But um, we also, you know, since we're, 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 we've increased in our size recently, so our products have increased as well. Um, we have actually some credit cards and lines of credits coming um, in 2023 for our department, but um, we also do the 504 SBA loan, which is a commercial loan or commercial property loan um, for any business owner that wants to purchase um, their business um, and they only have 10% down, which is uh, different than a traditional bank, which banks also offer. We actually work together with somebody like Wells Fargo or B of A. Um, and then we also have some other really cool, innovative products that um, can go up to $20 million um, as long as they're supporting a lower moderate income area. 
Um, so if there's any builders or, or anybody out there that, that is interested in something like that, that's, you know, minority or interested in investing in the low or moderate income area, there's a lot of different products um, as well for, for business owners or just um, purchasing even commercial buildings to, to help people in those areas. So I think that kind of summarizes us, us in a box. And then I've been doing this for 20 years to date myself. I know I look really young on camera, but I'm not that young. <laughs> All right, Miriam, thank you. Andrew. Yeah, good morning, Danny. Good morning, everyone. I'm Andrew Crone. I'm Senior VP, Marble Bridge Funding Group. I'm a California-based um, commercial finance company. We've been lending for now 24 years, and I've been at the company for 22 years. I do the sales and underwriting, and I'm here to help you in any way I can. Um, as a commercial finance company, our specialty is accounts receivable finance purchase order and contract finance. We have no minimums. We can fund up to 5 million a month. We can get it done in five to seven working days. If we have our package, I will spend many hours with you to make you an expert in what we do. And we work with clients who are B2B or B2G. So business, business or business government. We provide a product or a service and you invoice your client and you're waiting to get paid and you're looking to speed up the cash flow. And that's it. Thanks, Thanks Andrew. <laughs> Dan Juliet. Hi, Danny. Good morning, everyone. My name is Juliet. I work as a business development officer with Accessity. We are a mission based also lender, a CDFI, which is a community development financial institution. And we also work with businesses that aren't quite bankable yet. Um, so that can be a startup business, it can be an existing business. We do offer more of the micro loans. So we are doing um, loans up to $100,000, only term loans. Um, and we're really here to help businesses that are minority owned, veteran owned, um, anybody who is in a low to moderate income area, um, that is our ideal client. So definitely reach out and um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here today. Thank you. Fantastic. So you can see there's a wide array of different types of lenders from, you know, from a bank like with Melissa, nonprofit lenders like Juliet and Miriam, and uh, folks that kind of attach attack lending in, in different aspects with uh, with Fernando, Andrew and Pete. So, you know, really, that's a critical thing to recognize. So as you kind of look forward to this, and so my next question is, is really is kind of what some of the process with your, your organization is for people who are applying for a loan, what that looks like, and, you know, and, and what is a small business when they're, you know, the right fit for your organization. So, you know, like time and business, things like that. Why don't we go ahead and start with you, Pete? Yeah, so um, the application process with uh, LensSpark is actually really all about speed. And, and that's what sets us apart from maybe working with a local bank that might be a little bit more tedious on the paperwork end. Um, so our two main products, um, the working capital I'll do first, that's more um, predicated on your revenues and cash flows and less so on time and business and, and credit. Uh, we definitely do take a look at credit, but for that application process, we just need some bank statements. Usually we only ask for about three months in an application. So very light on the front end, You're usually able to get numbers turned around in about 24 hours, sometimes a little bit more. Uh, if it's a little bit of a complicated file. Um, and the funding process is very quick too. On the back end, we can get you funded in as little as one to two business days. So front to end, you know, you're looking at same week funding pretty much for most businesses. Same thing with the equipment side. Uh, most of our programs are application only, meaning we don't even need bank statements, just an application and a quote for if you're looking for a dump truck or if it's medical equipment. We Equipment is a very broad term. We, we do all sorts of odd end equipment we'll get into later. But um, that process is also very quick. Approval is usually same day or 24 hours and funding is another couple of days after. Um, as far as the equipment goes, it is more predicated on your time in business. Obviously, the longer, better. Um, we don't really do startup financing for that. We typically need about two years in business as a minimum. Uh, floodgates really open up in terms of dollar amount after about five years time in business is then when you start getting access to your six figure plus type deals. Um, but both programs have soft pull only at no point do we hard inquiry on your credit so for applying with us really just a couple minutes of your time gathering a few pieces of paperwork and an application and we can take a look at a file and get you some feedback same day usually no worries about credit or any impact thank you thanks pete andrew 
Our application process is pretty straightforward. Um, you'd spend about an hour with me discussing your business, what your needs are, what you're looking for. I'd explain our product and services to see if there's a fit. If there's a fit, we would um, gather a simple package. It um, would be financials, tax returns, the usual. I would go over that with you um, and make sure I understand the business in more detail. Um, since I do the underwriting and if it makes sense to me and I give you um, more detailed information on how we would work together and it works for you, um, you would submit the rest of the package to us, sign application, which takes about five minutes to fill out. It's about page, so it's pretty quick. And then we would go into underwriting, bring you in. So the whole process, if we get it all together from start to finish, could be in five to 10 working days and funded that quickly. And as I said earlier, from the, um, you know, as a credit limit type of thing, we can fund you up to five million a month and we could work at startups that are opening the doors um, the following week. So we can work with almost anybody as long as it's B2B and those are my attention plumbers, contractors, we do construction, um, any type of business where you're providing a product or a service. It's pretty quick. So, Thanks, Andrew. And Melissa, what about at Wells Fargo? So at Wells Fargo, it's really about getting to know your business and understanding what that need is. And so um, if we're looking at a startup loan for a doctor um, that can take roughly about 45 to 60. It really depends on how quickly we can move with lease agreements and so forth. Um, we do do um, application only for our unsecured products. Now, it depending on the client, um, we can do a startup and that will go up to 50 if it's an existing business plan with at least two years um, worth of uh, experience, then we can go ahead and um, just go ahead and ask for just a couple of numbers and be able to submit an application depending on the personal credit and the utilization on that personal credit, then we might have to ask for additional documentation. Um, if we are looking at commercial real estate, it does take about 60 days from beginning to end. And then we do have an equipment channel and that's about a two week turnaround time frame for that particular product. Um, so it really depends on the customer's needs. And you know, for whatever reason, I can't help you directly. I'm connected with folks here, Juliet, Miriam, and so we'll make sure that you get placed in the right home. Thank you. I'll jump in and go, Danny, you're muted. Um, but I'll go ahead and um, talk about from Accessity's point of view. Um, the, pro the first step that we um, really encourage you to do as a business owner to get any sort of lending with us is to have a conversation with us first. Um, we do do a hard pull to your credit. So we wanna make sure that if you are gonna go through the application process, that it is the right fit for you. And also that that you're the right kind of client for us. Um, like I said, we work with pure startup businesses. Um, if you are a startup, it's important that you have a source of income. Um, so that can be another job. It can be a spouse who works. It can be rental income. It can be side hustles that you have. We just want to make sure that there is some source of income that can that you can show because you're taking on debt. Um, but those are all things that we'll go over in the first conversation. It's usually about a 20 minute call with me um, just to see if you're a good candidate. And then our process is pretty quick. Once you go through that, once you fill out the application, which is online, uh, we collect documents from you. And once we get the documents, we go on to the underwriting process. Um, and that whole process is really based on how quickly you move as a borrower um, and how quickly you can get us a full package so that we can you know, submit everything. Once we get everything um, submitted and underwritten, we can do your loan in, in a couple of weeks. So that's one of the, the good things about our organizations that we can get you funding um, a little bit faster. Our loans are guaranteed with the state of California rather than the SBA. Um, so that just allows us to move a little bit quicker. And then our underwriting guidelines are a little bit more flexible. Um, so yeah, so that's what it would take with our organization. But yeah, definitely have a conversation with me first to make sure it makes sense. Fantastic. And Fernando. Yeah, very similar to, you know, what everybody else has said here. I mean, it all starts with a conversation. I think the, the biggest thing for us, what you're going to see is we really do base it on the on the assets that we can leverage, right? So if you had a down year um, or, you know, the, the previous year or maybe even, even currently, you're, you're not doing so well, right? But you landed a big contract. Um, there's a, lots of opportunity for growth. 
Um, and it's something that you've done in the past, right? As far as time in business, I mean, we really don't need you to have been in, in business for a very long time, but then it just goes back to the quality of the asset, right? If we're financing invoices, which is completed work, much easier to get something like that done than if we're doing POs, which is, um, you know, more on the front end and you, you haven't finished the work yet. So now there's, there's far more risk on the front end if we're putting money out the door. So we're going to have, want you to have had some experience with that process already in the past before we actually get involved on the PO side. Um, and then for anything even even riskier than that, then again, it's it's really, you know, is there real estate that we can leverage? Is there, you know, what kind of hard assets are there that we can go back and and leverage to mitigate the risk for us when we put money out the door? Um, and then what is where what is the repayment that we can tie that to, right? So we're really looking at is there going to be a liquidity event that's going to happen? Maybe we just need to bridge you to that. Uh, maybe you have some investors that you're bringing on. Maybe you're, you know, you or you just have a ton of invoices that are going to pay in in two months, right? So, what does that look like? What is that asset that we can leverage, and and how do we position that so we can get you the capital you need now? Fantastic. Thanks, Fernando and Miriam. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to echo what Fernando said and Juliet. For me, it definitely starts with a conversation. We do do a hard pull. So the last thing I want to do is honestly uh, waste your time in applying. Um, so don't apply online um, because they automatically pull your credit um, or pull your credit because that could damage you or, you know, not allow you to qualify somewhere else. So uh, a quick conversation with me, honestly, with some, some really easy questions, um, just uh, kind of sticking points for us to see if you would be a good candidate with us. So it takes about 15, 20 minutes. Um, and let's say you have a conversation with me and you sound like a great a great candidate, then I'll go ahead and send you an application. Um, and then from, from that point on, it really depends, um, kind of as Juliet said, uh, you know, on you, <laughs> but it, it our process like if you turn everything in on time when we ask for it is three to six weeks. So it's gotten a lot better than the past. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that, that kind of explains the process in itself. As far as in um, who we're going to help, I just wanted to clarify that, yes, we are mission or oriented and we are looking, you know, to help minorities and people that might not be able to access capital, but we're open to anyone. <laughs> so anyone who um, needs a startup, uh, doesn't matter, you know, where you live or what you look like. Um, so we, we are willing to help if you're a startup. That's a big mission for us because, you know, there, there's traditional lending, the, the great people here on the panel. Um, and then there's alternative lending, which is us. So it'd be someone like myself or Juliet. Um, and then there's predatory lending. Um, and so what we want to avoid is for you to get that predatory lending where, you know, you're charged per day or, or so forth or so on. It can really damage your business. So that's kind of a purpose and a reason why we're here. Um, so if that conversation turns out that I'm not able to help you, then I'll probably be referring you to some of the people on this panel. <laughs> I know I've made a couple of referrals this week to people on this panel, at least, you know, five or six. So um, we all work together. We, uh, San Diego is really good about playing well together. So um, we want to do what's best for you. Um, so um, yeah, I think that pretty much describes our process. And I explained before that we help startup business owners, um, existing business owners, and um, anybody who wants to acquire a business. In my department, personally, from 20 to 350,000, um, and our interest rates start at 7.75 percent. Fantastic. Well, thanks, Miriam. And so what I want to do now is is kind of look forward to 2023. Obviously, we're here at the you know end of the year. And uh, certainly there's been some, some you know, it, it's been an interesting economy to say the least, um, you know, as there's been some inflationary pressures, the raising interest rates, uh, yet that there still is a very um, robust labor market in terms of, you know, the, you know, unemployment is still very low. So it's a very, it's an interesting economy to say the least. So a, as we're going into 2023, um, in addition to, of course, the interest rates, which, you know, certainly you can talk about, but what are you looking at in terms of capital markets and what should be small businesses be thinking about uh, as we enter this uh, this next calendar year. Why don't we start with you, Juliet? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sorry, I was typing my info in the chat. <laughs> um, so what we're looking at in 2023, I mean, I think the biggest thing that I will always tell businesses is when you're filing your taxes to make sure that you're planning ahead, right? So everyone wants to, and this is mostly for existing businesses, but if you're going to be filing your taxes and and not necessarily showing a profit, that's not going to put you in a good position to access capital in the future. So really just planning ahead and knowing where you're going to be going um, 
that's like a little tip for businesses. Um, now, another thing you did mention with the interest rates, I do want to note that our interest rates are fixed rates. So they start at 6.99%, they go up to 14.99%, um, and that's based on the overall risk involved in lending to you. Um, and in that initial conversation, I can give you a quote for where you might be sitting interest rate wise, but our rates don't um, fluctuate based on the market. So they're, they're fixed rates. That means that they're not going to change as you see interest rates rising or, or decreasing. They are going to stay within that range. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that as well. Um, but really, you know, going into 2023, we're looking forward to helping more startup businesses. I think something we saw in 2022, because we have been doing a lot of COVID relief lending. Um, for the last two years, something that we saw is just so many new businesses starting up. Um, and so, I'm sorry about that. And so um, we're really excited to see more startup businesses um, come our way and, and seeing how many more that we can help in the areas that we serve. Awesome. Thanks, Juliet. And Fernando, what are you looking at for 2023 and advice you give to businesses? Um, you know, really, again, it really comes back to how they're they're setting themselves up for 2023, right? We're, we're seeing, well, I'm seeing a lot of two sides of, of the coin where I have a lot of businesses that are coming to me and they're saying, I know I'm in a great position to succeed next year. And I think my competition is going to suffer. And I want to, you know, I want more capital to position myself to, you know, to take advantage of that. And um, when I look at the financials, it does not show that at all, right? I'm like, hold on, you're, you don't look that strong, really. Like, I, I don't think you should really be taking on this additional debt right now. Um, and so I, I think it's really just ha um, having a game plan and, and kind of a strategy, a go forward strategy, right? Because you really need to make sure, is, is it something where you're in a good position to take on more market share? Or is it something where you really need to tighten up and just be in a bit of a survival mode? Because capital markets are drying up, you know, not only are rates increasing, but you know, money's being taken out of the system. Uh, banks are not as eager to lend. And, you know, so we're seeing a lot more opportunities in, in, in my industry because the banks are tightening up and they're tightening up for a reason, right? And so what, what we're, we're, we're seeing these financials, uh, degradation of the, the quality of the financials more and more every, every month and the deals are getting harder and harder to do. So I, I believe that that trend is going to continue into next year. Um, so not, not great. Right. But if you're smart about it and you, you take the right type of debt on, right. And you really plan your, your sources and uses, right. Like if, if you're going to take on a, a huge loan to buy inventory that you're going to sell through in a month or two, and then repay that back over like five years, probably not going to work really well for you. Right. But if you get the right type of capital, that's going to allow you to, you know, to kind of revolve that and, and do things in a smart way. Um, I think that that could be really helpful. So just be strategic, I think, is the, the best piece of advice I can give right now, because things are going to get tougher and um, you just really need to put yourself in a position to not lose as well. Right. That That's really important. Fantastic. Thanks, Fernando. And Pete, what about you for 2023? What are, what are you all looking at? Yeah, uh, mine's going to be a little bit more focused on the equipment side of things. Um, I think right now, more than ever. Uh, it, you have to shop around, you have to do your homework when you're purchasing pieces of equipment, if it's machinery, et cetera, trucks, trailers, whatnot. Uh, we've seen crazy fluctuations in prices for these assets over the last year or two with COVID. Some of these trucks have literally gone as high as, you know, 50, 60% what their value was a year and a half ago. So combine that with the way rates are right now, you can't afford to get into a, a, a piece of equipment that's already inflated dollar amount wise. Then you add on higher rates than usual. All of a sudden, you know, four years from now, your, your asset that you maybe paid three times over for its actual value. So I think right now in terms of equipment, go look at a few. There's a lot of, there's a, the biggest gap in variance in pricing that I've ever seen. There's not very much standardization when it comes to used equipment now in the market. So definitely do your homework and, and, and make sure you're getting a good deal on something because you're going to get locked in. Usually a lot of these equipment loans are fixed and you get locked in for three, four years. And if it's a high rate and you paid way too much for it, you're really putting yourself behind the eight ball. Should you want to sell that asset? later down the road. 
Fantastic. Thanks, Pete. And Miriam, what about you? What, what are you looking at for 2023 and telling folks? Well, um, honestly, as a CDFI, we, um, and I think I mentioned this before, but we, we've gotten a lot of funding. And so where right now traditional lenders might tighten up their credit, we're like polar opposite. We want to lend. <laughs> so we are opening up in many, many states um, to do the same thing that I'm doing, which is to do microloans via SBA and the state. And then also, um, so through SBA, you know, the small business development or the small uh, business administration, the government. And then also we have um, state loans as well that are guaranteed by the state. Um, and then we have our own products as well. And um, we've been seeing a little bit of what Fernando said. So a term loan is typically the only type of loan that we offer. And we've been seeing that there are, um, there is a better fit for some clients, even if they're startups for a line of credit. Um, for example, a client that has experience that is leaving, um, let's say he's leaving a flooring company and bringing the majority of his clients. So he's already has his business. There's not a lot of ramp up period that he needs. He just needs capital to be able to, you know, do the job um, and, and probably a revolving line. So that's what we're working on right now. Um, I'm on the team to help uh, build a really good line of credit and also some credit cards. You know, there's some startup businesses um, that also just need a, you know, 3000 5000 you know, $10,000 line of credit that would just be credit based, uh, much lower, obviously, than traditional lenders would allow. So, so yeah, we're, we're really on the up as far as in, you know, we're excited that, um, you know, the government has seen um, the need in, in this area for um, not just startups, but LMI areas and, and so forth and so on. So we're excited to, to um, lend, lend, lend. <laughs> um, so that w you'll be seeing a lot of that and a lot of new products um, this coming year in 2023, um, and a lot of different ways, more creative ways to underwrite and hopefully get people approved and funded. So that's really exciting. Um, as far as an advice um, to your clients, I think I, I love to give this advice is it's again, you know, the end of the year, perfect time, you know, it's going to be time for you to do your taxes. So um, I think as Fernando mentioned as well, um, have a plan talk to your CPA. If you plan on, you know, getting a, a loan next year or applying for a loan or growing your business, um, talk to your CPA. You know, there's, I'm not a CPA, but there are a lot of deductions that you can do, you know, throughout the years, or you could skip a year or so forth or so on. And um, so there's, there's a lot of creative things that you can work out with your CPA um, because, you know, for lenders, it doesn't matter if you're an alternative lender or what kind of lender you are. Um, you're always looking for cash flow. So cash flow is king. So that basically means in a simple way is, um, do you have the money to repay the loan that you're asking for on a monthly basis, right? So um, if you're, you know, an existing business owner and you're coming to me and you're, you know, $100,000 short and you want a loan for $100,000, that, that doesn't really uh, make sense if you're negative $100,000. So, um, you know, I know we love saving on taxes as business owners, but talk to your CPA and see what makes sense. If you want a loan in 2023, it's, it's a good conversation, a good time to have that. So that would be my, my biggest piece of advice is, you know, plan ahead. Fantastic. Thanks, Miriam. Andrew. Yeah, I would first of all agree a lot of the things that Fernando said are right on. Um, we are seeing the same things at our end as far as clients. Um, business is picking up tremendously. Um, we are gearing up and think 2023 will be one of the best years we've had, but it's also a very challenging year for a small business. Um, a comment I would make, um, because this is an SBDC event, you should be talking to um, the consultants at SBDC. Because of the challenging year we're going to have next year for a lot of businesses, and so one business can affect another business, you definitely want to have some plans in play that if you can expand your business and grow, you have that set up. If some things don't go your way, you have a second plan to shrink the business and stay profitable because it's going to be a challenging year for a lot of businesses. You're going to have the usual things going on. Inflation's not going away. It's going to continue into next year and probably several years beyond that, we believe. And so you're going to have to have pricing capacity where you can raise your prices 
in order to pass on the cost. Your employees are going to be expecting more money. We keep seeing that. Um, my wife just is a in the school district, and they just finally settled a um, contract, and 14% is coming her way. So there are going to be wage increases and wage pressures that's continuing to happen. And you got to look at your business. If you have inflation, you got to sell more. You got to do more in order to stay the same or you got to increase your prices to maintain your margins. So working with SBDC or get yourself a financial consultant, um, talk to your CPA, um, talk to legal, make sure you have everything all set up for next year. On the lending side for us, um, these rate increases have no effect on us. We're doing the lowest funding rates that we've done in 24 years, and that's been fine. Um, our clients are doing well. There are a lot of new young businesses coming in. I expect to see a huge um, increase in startup and young businesses, which will need the SBDC's help and will need our help as well going into next year because there are layoffs as you're seeing happen. And we've seen this, um, I've been doing this 22 years. So usually when we go in a cycle like this, a lot of people say, well, I'm not working for anyone anymore. I'm going to do my own thing and start my own business. So I expect to see a wave of new businesses. And there are a lot of categories that are going to do very well next year because of infrastructure projects on the grid, um, getting ready for EVs, electrical cars, and so there's a lot of different things that are going to go on, a lot of interesting currents out there. But, um, you know, the key is, is the plan, 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 and you can never have enough money. So you have a panel here that has a huge amount of experience. Um, you should be talking to all of us to get an idea of what we can do for you. And um, another thing to throw out there, this panel is vetted, but there are a lot of what you call predatory lenders out there. And if you're not aware of this, and maybe some of the panelists in state of California, um, starting December 8th, has a new lender disclosure law for all lenders who are non-bank entities, which is including Marble Bridge. We're all set up for that. Um, we're complying with the state, but a lot of lenders that come in from out of state that are predatory that are coming in, if they're not mentioning that, don't do business with them because they're going to violate the state law and that's going to come back to bite them. And when that happens, I expect to see a lot less out of state predatory lending in the state of California, because rather than doing all the legal that they have to spend to get their contracts up to speed, they're not going to come into the state. So I think it's going to be tighter as far as where you're getting money from. And I think qualifying is going to be more difficult. But um, on the lenders on this panel, plenty of us have a pretty low bar, as you can hear from everyone, to get the funds. And um, we're a good group to work with. That's what I got. Fantastic. And that's excellent advice, Andrew, about the, the predatory lending and the updates for the California law. I see, see Juliet vigorously nodding. And um, I mean, but that is a fantastic advice because there are a lot of predatory lenders and in, in, in California, it was good that that, you know, that was a recognition. Uh, you know, you know, here at SBDC, we we absolutely know know the good lenders that are out there. That's who we have on the panel. But we want to, you know, to understand that there's a lot and a diverse types of different types of quality lenders that are out there. And, and that's very important. All right. With Melissa, we'll, we'll wrap up with you with Wells Fargo in the 2023 part in the, in the crystal ball. And then what is, uh, what's Wells Fargo saying about 2023? So um, we have recently increased some of our credit limits. So um, that tells me that, you know, we're excited. We're not tightening. We're a very conservative lender. So, um, you know, because we have been conservative and are, trends have always, you know, historically, we've always underwrote the same. Um, I don't expect any changes. And that's what our leadership is, is saying. We're not going to be changing the way that we lend, but we are a conservative lender. So therefore, you know, profit is really important. Cash flow is extremely important. And I think right now what I've seen is, um, you know, if you received an EIDL loan, if you're receiving earnings um, allowances for your employees, um, if you received PPP money, um, and you're including that as a income um, to the business, we do have to remove that because that's not a recurring um, income for the business. So it's really important that you understand that once we remove that number, if the business has a negative um, net income, that potentially will, that will affect the application. And so it's really important to understand um, your tax returns. I would say now, if you're looking to do any purchasing going into next year, talk to the advisors with the SBDC, connect with your team, you know, 
I'm business development. I'm, it's really important for me to go ahead and understand your business. And I, you know, my job is to go ahead and put a team around you. And so by really understanding what does your financial picture look like today, we're still in time before you file your tax returns to be able to educate you as to what we're seeing. So then you can go back to your CPA, your accountants and have that you know, confident um, conversation with them and say, you know, help me understand how it is that I'm doing my taxes. More often than not, most of our business clients don't have a good understanding of what they're writing off. You know, they know that they're doing really well, but then when they start looking at their financials, like Fernando mentioned, unfortunately, the numbers don't quite make sense to what they believe the business is doing. So it's really important. And I would say the last thing right now is, um, you know, if you have revolving credit, you have credit cards and lines of credit, and you're not able to pay those down, um, it's really important to start looking at a term loan. Um, don't have, you know, high utilization on your credit cards, because that can be a concern to many lenders, including Art, Wells Fargo, um, where your balances are at, you know, 80, 90 percent, and you're not paying them down. If we see that, we're going to ask for bank statements to be able to see that recurring pay down. Um, and so if, if you're not able to show that you can pay them down, um, we want to know, like, you know, we're going to be curious as to why are you asking for more revolving credit? Um, and maybe we should be looking at consolidating that debt. So thank you, Danny. Appreciate it. Awesome. Lots of great stuff from all of you. You know, I like what what uh, what Melissa was talking about and that, you know, the last few years with all of the COVID relief, that it, it is going to make your bottom line look weird. I guess is the best way to put it. Um, and, you know, and understand what that is and not take that as, you know, as traditional patterns or, or things like that. And really, you know, you've, there's been a lot of, you know, oddness with your income over the last three years and really understanding what that is going to look like. And so here at SBDC, I mean, we're going to, you know, we have our advisors are able to kind of help you dig through that to make sure you present the right story as you go into, you know, go into talk to a lender and look at what your particular capital needs are and what uh, amount of capital really makes sense for your business, you know, based upon the current uh, economic situation. So, Next, I want to kind of go to a fun one. Uh, you know, we all like to talk about a success story and and some great things that we've done over the last uh, last year or so. So I'm sure each of you have one. You feel free to anonymize it and uh, and kind of tell us about a, a, a cool client that you were able to help and in something kind of something kind of fun. Pete, I see you excited to be able to tell your story. Ah, I always <laughs> got a couple good ones. This one's this one's a little this one's a little bit more vanilla for you. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we did help a business that uh, a men, um, a group that owned about two or three Marriott hotels. They're purchasing another two locations in the San Antonio area. We are a nationwide lender. Uh, they had a senior loan position for about 20 mil. We just came in to fill in some gaps for about 1.5 million. Um, that is a little bit larger for us. We're usually in, in the working capital space in, in and around 750 to a million. So that was a, a good success story. We were able to get that amount of money approved and funded in about a week, week and a half, which is, is pretty impressive for that dollar amount. Um, and then on the equipment side, I had a return customer um, and they have excellent credit. They've been around for 20 plus years, but uh, the issue with them is uh, they are in the uh, pet crematory business. So their asset and collateral is a little bit odd for a bank. Um, it's not really repossessable. So uh, I helped them with their machinery. It's over $100,000 machines. They're not cheap. Got them five-year financing, knocked it out of the park, mid-single digit rates. Um, but that is a funky piece of equipment, a pet <laughs> cremator that we just did <laughs> last week. Thanks again for having me. So see, there is no deal that cannot be done. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Juliet. Well, I have a client who he hasn't closed yet, but I just got word yesterday. And, um, you know, I don't have favorites, but I want to say this is one of my longest clients um, that I've had. I've, I've been with Accessi for about four and a half years. Um, and he was one of my first clients I ever signed um, loan documents with in person, you know, back in the day. <laughs> And we did a small loan for him at the very beginning. He, uh, he has a food business, by the way, uh, very successful food business. He's really starting to, to blow up. He's um, an African um, young man who has just had a lot of success with, with everything that he touches. And it's just a really great thing to see. 
Um, but we gave him a small loan. We, like I mentioned, we do really micro loans. So the first loan we ever gave him was $5,000. He paid it off. Um, he came, he came back. We gave him a COVID relief loan, um, about $21,000. He's almost more than halfway done with that loan. Um, and then we just approved a $40,000 loan for him to open up a second location downtown. Um, I'm really, really, really excited for him because we can just see, I mean, his numbers are growing significantly. It's great to see how he has gone from a $5,000 loan to a $20,000 loan to a $40,000 loan. Um, and actually he was able to get a loan through a bank. Um, and that is really the whole point of our program is to graduate them. Now, after he got the loan from the bank, he went back to get the additional funding. Um, but his credit score is, is low. And it's just because he's, you know, younger, just hasn't used a lot of credit. Um, he's actually in the 500s. And so the bank came back and said, you know, we can't, we can't extend more capital to him. We already gave him a loan. Um, so that's why he ended up having to come back with us again. So he's kind of, you know, he's getting to the traditional point, but he's not, he, he's not quite there yet. Um, even though he does have a traditional loan. So it's a good example of somebody who um, we helped get started. He's growing. Um, he just has, you know, low credit. And so we're really working with him on his credit. We have a program that uh, we are connecting him with to get um, credit counseling. And so he can really work on getting his FICO score up so that he doesn't need us in the future. But for now, I'm very happy for him and, and really excited to see him grow and prosper in downtown San Diego on 6th Avenue. Fantastic. Thanks, Juliet. Of course. Andrew. Yeah, so I have a new one that um, we just brought on board um, last week, and it's the first client to sign under the new California loss. So he got his first disclosure and got that one out of the way and on the books. But this is sort of a like, very um, exciting um, client in the security business. And so he got a, um, or is going to get a $350,000 um, line from a nonprofit lender, an SBA product that is subordinate to us. And um, we are going to play the receivable side and the contract he got. And he did about 300000 in revenue last year. It's his third year out, but he's been looking for that large contract and he got it. And he's going to be jumping from 300000 to about $7 million a year. And so we figured out how we can fund them and how the, the billing cycle is going to work. And we just brought him on board and um, it's going to change his life. <laughs> and so it's an example of how you can work. And I, Miriam mentioned this earlier that um, we all partner together, but there are also ways to partner where more than one lender can help you. And this was an example where the two of us were stronger than just doing it separately, where one of us just couldn't provide everything the client needed. So um, there are small accounts and there are large accounts. This is an example of a small client who's gonna totally change everything within um, 2023 and grow very rapidly. So it's really exciting. It's a good, um, good, good company and um, we expect great things from him. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. And Melissa. Thank you, Danny. So I have a client um, in Northern California um, that had came to us because he was interested in doing some construction. So we were working with our SBA team to go ahead and get that going for him. And then he had to pivot real quickly because he found some equipment that he really liked. And so um, we went ahead and were able to lift our equipment team to help him purchase um, some trailers that he needed to purchase for the business. Um, and so we were able to get that done within two weeks. Um, now uh, we are working because he's uh, purchasing some of these um, equipments and auctions. So we are going to be providing him a $500,000 line of credit for his business. So then he could draw from that and be able to purchase um, additional equipment for the business. In addition, um, we are still working on getting that construction component going for him. We move as quickly as our customers can move. And so he's still working on getting some documents from the general contractor in order to go ahead and get, get that taken care of. But it's really exciting because it really comes down to the relationship and understanding you know, what is important to our clients, what is it that we need to move quickly on, and um, you know, 
what can we go ahead and move on their pace? So um, it, it's all about relationship and really taking the time to understand our customers' needs. And that has been essentially the case with this particular customer. The transparency of what's important to him has allowed us to fulfill his needs. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. And Fernando. Uh, yeah, you know, we, we actually just funded two days ago a local hot sauce company uh, based here out of San Diego. Um, we actually talked to them earlier this year and, and they ended up going with a, another lender and, uh, and had a terrible experience, unfortunately, for them. So we, we, they came back to us, realized, hey, you know what, your, your product actually really fits what we need. Um, the issue was we had to, you know, we had another lender in place. So we, we were able to work with them and, and get the other lender paid off. Um, by partnering with a, another lender here in the community that was able to provide some term debt. Um, and then we're able to now factor them and provide PO financing on, on the front end to help them grow. They just uh, inked the new contract with Walmart that's going to start up soon. So huge opportunity for them. And, you know, the product they were in just wasn't a good fit uh, to really to manage the growth that they were going to be experiencing. So this, uh, this you know, asset-based program just lends itself to much better to what they're, what they're going to be experiencing in the next few months and the coming years. So that was a great win for us. And it was nice to, you know, to get them back after we'd gone through the whole process and, you know, they went in a different direction. It was so disappointing, but in the end it worked out. So that was a, that was a great win. Awesome. Thanks, Fernando. And Miriam. Yeah. So I was actually talking to you, Danny, about this on a Wednesday, and I'm still super excited about it. Just a loan that recently funded and um, was actually referred to me from SBDC. And, um, you know, one of your, your awesome, I mean, all of your business advisors, uh, you know, long-term relationships, I love them. And so, you know, Sean referred this client to me and he, his passion is, is martial arts and he's been doing it since he was a child. And, um, you know, he wanted to start a martial arts studio. So when he came to me, um, there really were some pain points. Um, so, um, you know, when I, when a client has that initial conversation with me, or especially if they apply, I always think if a client goes through the work of applying, because it's not fun, it's a lot of work, <laughs> um, then I definitely do, uh, you know, I, I review the application. And um, even if I know right up front that they're going to be declined, I review it and see if, okay, so that I can come back to the client and tell them, okay, here's, you're not, you're, I can't prove you right now, but here's a roadmap. Like here's a list of five or six things that you can fix so you can come back in the future. So that's exactly what happened with Alan. Um, and he was lucky enough to be working with you guys and lucky enough to be working with Sean. So, you know, it wasn't like he had to go home and try to do this on his own. So I gave him a list of about six things um, of why I needed to decline him and what he could change. Um, and with Sean's help, he came back and he uh, came back, I think like a year later and he had resolved those issues. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, he had added a few more. <laughs> so then, you know, I gave him a very short list this time and he came back about, um, I don't know, eight months later um, and we were just recently able to fund him and he is just so ecstatic and, you know, he has a son and it's always been his dream for his son to be part of his business um, um, and then share, you know, martial arts with his community. So, so yeah, I just, you know, um, I love helping people. I love what our company, you know, allows people to do. Um, so not only did Alan's dream come true for him and his family, but now he gets to sh share that passion of martial arts with other kids in his own community. So, um, you know, just love that we work together. And I love, you know, in, in order to be a successful business owner, you have to have tenacity. And so that's what I saw from this client. It's like, he, he's not going to give up. <laughs> um, and he took my advice and, and here we go. He just funded last month. So that's my feel good story. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Miriam, uh, for that story. But, uh, you know, and I, I know Alvin as well. He he really is a great guy. Um, but again, all these stories show that, you know, there there's ways in which you can do it. I mean, even if you have a, a pet crematorium, uh, you have different types of challenges, you don't have the best credit, um, you've got some weird fluctuations, um, or, you know, in Fernando's case, the market's a bit spicy. Um, we can certainly... Uh, you know, there's help out there for you. So we, again, we appreciate uh, Fernando, Andrew, Juliet, Melissa, Pete, and Miriam. Uh, we, we thank you all. We hope everybody has uh, happy holidays and enters 2023 um, and uh, certainly can enjoy some time with, uh, with those who are important to you. So take care and have a great one, everybody. Thank you. Happy holidays.